what we have here is the 1934 RCA 262 chassis out of the cabinet. And as you can see, there's there's a lot more a lot more rust on here than I initially thought because it was in the cabinet. And uh, what I plan to do is to use a uh, navel jelly to to get it off. And you could you could buy this at Ace Hardware, and you brush the navel jelly on, and I think you let it sit a little bit, and you wipe it off with like a damp rag. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then uh, you have to protect it. So I was checking on AntiqueRadio.com, and they had suggested to use a uh, it was called appliance stainless steel paint. It's a, it's a epoxy paint made by uh, Rustoleum. And uh, I can only find that uh, in spray cans so far, but I think I, a spray can would be good, but it would be hard to spray in between these things without dis disassembling everything. So I think once I strip all the rust off, I'm going to uh, use a brush to brush uh, this uh, Rust-Oleum product on. And I did try uh, this product here, this uh, gray primer, real quick test but I didn't, I didn't like the, what it looked like so uh, we'll go with a Rust-Oleum stainless steel product or a clear something to protect it once all the rust is off because if you don't protect it it's going to rust up very quickly again so what I wanted to show you here I'll, let me flip it up here this is a pretty heavy chassis and what I have to do is make some kind of uh, fixture to hold this because this is kind of dangerous standing up like this. Well, I'll just do it really quick to show everyone what I'm doing. And uh, if you look over here, I noticed that uh, this thing has been repaired before, or someone tried to troubleshoot. Someone had put a 20 amp fuse in, and which is way over the rating. It should be only a 3 amp fuse. And uh, apparently they were trying to troubleshoot it, and they had bypass the fuse altogether by soldering the two wires together so it had no fuse in it so that's really pretty alarming and kind of disturbing actually that they had done that so uh, what I wanted to do was to check out and see if the power transformer is still good so let me do that I'll turn my volt ohm meter on put it on the high scale here 1500 volt scale and that's warm it's warming up here now I'll hook up the ground to the input to the rectifier tube and I do have the rectifier out of the circuit so I'll put one leg on here and this is the plus. Try to get it in here. This one was the plus here. Okay, what I'm going to do is plug in the radio to my Variac. And what I done was I put a one and a half fuse inside the Variac here. The Variac had a seven amp fuse, but I just put a 1.5 amp in here. It was a lot lower. And we're going to turn the rear variac on. And we're going to ramp the voltage up slowly. And we're listening for any sizzles. Okay, we got about 60% in and about 400 volts on the AC scale. And I'll ramp it up some more going to 100% now and at 100% I have 
it's about 710 volts and I'm listening very carefully and uh, I don't hear anything sizzing and I'm going to fuel the transformer and there's nothing heating up so I think this is good so what I could do is leave this power down for about 10-15 minutes to see if this thing heats up or not but I think this transformer is good so I'm going to power back down right now and what I wanted to point out here was that inside the chassis it's, it's actually pretty clean and that was because they had a cover on it I'd taken the cover off the cover was was pretty bad it's pretty uh, oxidized and mold growing on it and everything but the cover kind of saved inside of the radio the inside isn't too bad and I was doing some testing yesterday and the IF coils seem all okay and that's really good uh, there was one coil here this coil right here and uh, this coil has an, an open circuit on it I, I tested it a few times and um, it really is open this there's a thick wire on here that the thicker wire is okay but the thinner wire that you can't really see in this video there's an open on it so um, I'm gonna have to take this transformer out or this coil this is actually um, the detector coil but it's for band D which is 18 megahertz to 36 megahertz so I only know if the radio originally could even do all that but I'm gonna have to take the coil out and then uh, count the number of turns coming off of, and get the same uh, AWG gauge of the wire and wind it back in the same direction and to fix that it's, it's possible that also the wire is broken right at the uh, right at the terminal here it could be broken right there so I could test that out too and that was just one of the things I noticed that was bad uh, another thing that's kind of humorous and I'll do this real fast is that if you look here I said what was what is what in the world is this there's something like growing on top of something and uh, if you look here there's something growing out of this capacitor so this capacitor is more likely shop I'm gonna replace the electrolytics anyway but if you look underneath it someone has stuck a cork in the hole and that was all whatever mold is growing on top of the cork so that was kind of like a strange surprise but if you look at all this all the resistors look they look pretty good they're they look very bright brightly colored you know, for a 75-year-old radio, things are very brightly colored here. So, um, it's, it's pretty good. So, what I plan to do is to um, replace all the capacitors, and um, not the mica capacitors, but all the electrolytics and the, and the uh, paper capacitors. I'm going to leave the resistors in this radio, and I'm going to, when I power back up, I'm going to measure the voltages at the tubes and see if they're still in in like I think they take 20% uh, tolerance so if the voltages are in tolerance I'll leave the resistors in it but if they're all out of tolerance I'll start replacing things anyway that's it thanks a lot bye